Greetings, Andy Dukes here, live on Facebook and Instagram. I'm at a top secret location, somewhere in Germany. But have I got something special to show you? Come on inside and follow me. Hey, Christian. Hey, Andy. How you doing? Good to see you. See you. Okay, so I'm here with uh, Christian Pingerson. He's head of uh, head of product management for BMW Motorrad. And actually, Christian's one of the one of the people responsible for getting the GS Trophy concept off the ground in the first place. Tell us a little bit about that and how that happened. Well, that was quite some years ago, uh, the beginning of the 2000s years. Uh, we heard that our colleagues in South Africa had started a GS Challenge, GS Safari type of event with their customers, an adventurous GS ride and uh, some exercises, and we liked the idea very much. So we decided for 2005, with the launch of the HP2 Enduro, that we will offer something for the introduction to our dealers. So we had a little dealer type of uh, adventure contest. And uh, during that event, uh, we found that this was really exciting and uh, everyone loved it. So we said this should be something for our customers, a little bit bigger, more international. And that's how two colleagues and myself came up with the idea of doing the international GS Trophy. And of course, have a look at this bike. Just come on in close and have a little bit of a look, look at this bike because I know that's what you're all, all wanting to hear about. And I'm going to tell you a lot more about that in a minute, Christian. But there's a lot of people thanking you, you know, for helping get that concept off the ground. And of course, we had three, the first three International GS trophies were on the F800 GS and the next three were on the R1200 GS. Now we've seen a return to the F850 GS. What's the uh, reasoning behind that? Well, actually, we always uh, wanted to show that both our GS uh, bikes, uh, the mid-range uh, GSs and the big GSs, are capable of doing an event like the GS Trophy. And we decided that uh, we will use one or the other uh, when they are launched, and then the success, the succeeding year, uh, we prepare them and use them for the trophy. Actually, even in the first few trophies, we had big GSs with us. So those were written by the Marshall teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, and uh, so I had the pleasure of riding the last five trophies at the Marshall and can only say that uh, both bikes were fantastic depending on the conditions and type of exercises you do with the 21 inch front wheel or the 19 uh, inch front wheel with the, um, with the BGS. Yeah. Now I'm sure you've got a few questions that you want to discover about these bikes. So if you want to fire any questions across to us, we'll do our best to answer them for you either live on air or later on, there's a whole team waiting uh, in the back office in Munich to answer those questions for you. Now New Zealand, it's such a long way away, but the event is fast approaching, so what conditions can uh, riders expect to find over there? Well, first of all, New Zealand is a fantastic country, as we will find out. Uh, there are epic scenes around every corner, you want to stop every five minutes and take a picture. That uh, is uh, probably the most uh, significant uh, thing you will, you will find out. Nevertheless, it is a quite a challenging off-road country. We have some uh, severe gravel roads and single trails. Uh, there can be some dust depending on the weather conditions. It's late summer then, so uh, we are also cro crossing some mountains, so it can be quite cold at night, so it can be kind of uh, wet the next morning, wet and cold, so climate will change quite a bit, so it will be a challenge. Always expect the unexpected. Absolutely. Absolutely. And quite some water, as you can imagine. It's New Zealand. <laughs> I'm sure the people watching can't wait. Now, I've got, I think, a final uh, confirmation. I think 23 teams from across the globe. Uh, there's going to be an international team, team contingent. That's going to be decided in Spain uh, at the end of this month. There are going to be journalists, there are going to be marshals, there's going to be extras. So, roughly, how many bikes are being prepared? I mean, you can see them all around me now. There are even more in another couple of halls. I'm, I'm surrounded by GSs and I can't get to ride one, it's killing me, but how many in total would you say? Our project team has, uh, has prepared up to 140 bikes for this next year's event. Wow, wow. Now, it used to take months and months to get to New Zealand by sea. You can also go by air, but it's a lot of bikes. So, uh, are they bikes. going by air freight or sea freight? No, they go by sea freight and they will probably be going on the, on the boats uh, end of this month and uh, hopefully arriving in time without any storm damages or any ships drowning in the rough sea uh, just uh, a few weeks before the event starts, so in January. So that's what we're planning at the moment. Okay, well we're going to take a closer look at the bikes and tell them yeah. in a minute. Were these built in Berlin or were they all prepared yeah. in Berlin? That's a, that's a Berlin production bike. Uh, usually you cannot buy this bike uh, exactly this way. 
It was built on a special production line that we use for authority by production. And uh, this production line gives us the freedom of combining uh, components into a bike that are not available for the regular customer, at least not at the moment. So uh, we combined uh, some stuff that is necessary for the GS Pro 2020 and put that on the bike, despite it's not, uh, not possible to order that exactly this way with the regular air. Okay, so all the people who have won their places on the trophy teams are going to be uh, fe feeling pretty impressed with themselves yeah. right at this moment. Yeah. I can already see it's equipped with lots of special parts, you know, designed obviously to protect protect the bike, and, uh, but also to protect riders from, from the elements as well, because there's, there's going to be a little bit of everything over there, isn't there? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we will probably go to the bike the bike and look at some of the components of course so come a little bit closer cameras because we're going to be uh, showing you some uh, enclosed details yes here. so uh, of course going to the protection bikes uh, protection parts i'm sorry um first of all we have the, the protector for the handlebar we have a large windscreen we have a headlight protector and uh, that is definitely uh, necessary to adjust uh, the uh, the um, windscreen for dust and stones flying around and dirt uh, if you're riding in groups and uh, under special off-road hard conditions. And, and they're always going to be riding in groups yes. in between stages, yes. aren't they? Uh, so there are groups, roads, I yeah, there groups up to like uh, eight to ten people, dependent yeah. on, on uh, which groups we talk about. And uh, so you always have some, some dirt flying around and some stones, so that is definitely necessary. To, to protect the bike, we also, of course, are using the, the engine uh, protector here and the aluminium bash plate for underneath the bike to protect the engine from, from underneath. And from your experience as well, of course, the, uh, the protection bars are used for, for a lot more than just protecting yeah, the bike. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, we have some exercises that we can, where we, where we um, yeah, pull the bike uh, with a second bike and we had some minor accidents where some of the participants were too excited and uh, were going off the road and uh, then we had to get the bikes out of uh, some steep uh, yeah, corners and uh, that is necessary to mount the, the, the tires and everything and to pull them back up again so that's also very useful of course. Essential parts, what else have we got? Well, uh, for, for the whole um, ergonomic setup uh, and uh, the adaptation for every rider you need the perfect bike for such a for such a hard uh, use you, you want to have the perfect uh, condition so first of all uh, we have a higher um, handlebar so that you are in a stand-up position and you're you don't have to bend down too much so definitely that handlebar is raised so that's higher up yeah geared, geared more towards standing for long periods exactly yeah. okay and uh, then we have adjustable also the uh, brake pads on this side and on the other side the gear shifter okay. so, uh, so, so that flip flat I presume that flips up if you're riding on the road sitting down but, but exactly. in this position at the moment it's for riding stood up with uh, enduro boots on exactly so that's for on for on road and if you if you are standing up you use the brake pad like this and uh, you, your foot might be bent down a little bit yeah. and you use it this way so that's uh, very useful and of course we have the uh, Euro uh, foot pegs so that your, your boots have a full grip. That looks like a rally seat to me. And we have the high rally seat here so that for standing position and the rally use uh, we have a good good seating position. What's this for? That's just a small back uh, mounted to the passenger seat okay. and some more room if you want to mount some luggage. Uh, just for the, for the riders, they usually have a little first aid kit, they have a rain jacket, they have some water with them. So some stuff they need during the ride every day. So, so, so they don't need to carry stuff on their back? No, yeah. because we don't want that. Usually you know in case you want, you're falling down, you have anything in your backpack that is hard and stiff, you can hear yourself and uh, that's what we want to avoid. And as you're riding single and don't have to carry all the, the, the tents and the luggage, which is fortunately on the truck for them. Yeah. So we, we have the room here and just put it here so that it's not in the way and can be used easily. Okay, okay. cool sports exhaust. Sports exhaust. Sports we have off-road tires mounted, of course, for, for uh, the hard enduro route use. And uh, going to the, to the functional part, of course, we have the bike equipped with uh, the Riding Modes Pro. So you can, uh, with the mode selector button, you can uh, switch between the riding modes. The most important for the trophy is, of course, uh, the Enduro Pro mode that uh, adjusts the bike just for hard use in, in off-road conditions. 
And uh, that combines the bike, of course, with all the traction control, uh, ABS Pro system, everything that is uh, standard um, with, the, uh, with the riding modes okay. on the 850GS. And uh, that is, of course, built into the bike. I think also got me to grip it. Yeah, yeah so it's it's a <laughs> we had the, the, the teams that have prepared the trophy. Uh, expected uh, expected rough uh, conditions and it really got down to seven degrees okay. in February, which is comparable to August in, in Central Europe. Yeah. And that's quite cold in the night, so you in the morning you might you might have some uh, warmer fingers and use your okay. hands uh, or some conditions properly. So, so guys and girls, you are going to be going up in the mountains. Yes. Just be aware of that. Okay. Nice TFT screen there. Bit of connectivity going on. Absolutely, also. it's the, our standard TFT screen. Uh, with connectivity, so the riders that have uh, the BMW Enduro helmets and have a BMW communication system are connected to the bike, and uh, so they can use that uh, connection during the ride. And furthermore, of course, we also have a navigation system, but that's not for, not the, for, the, riders, not for the riders because they would know all the routes and everything. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do, but uh, some of the the marshals, of course, will have that and some of the uh, other personnel that is coming with us that yeah. need to know exactly the latest track and uh, maybe the press teams, uh, they would need that. And it's mounted on a special position, a little bit higher up uh, for standing conditions, uh, so we decided to mount it up on top of the TFT screen for that purpose. Uh, it just looks fantastic, Christine. I'm sure there are many, many of you watching who've won a place on the GS Trophy team for 2020 who are just looking at their bike and getting really excited and of course GS fans themselves watching thinking okay maybe that's going to be me in the future 2022 and beyond so I'm just going to check if we've got any questions just coming in while, while we're talking oh thank you Connie okay we've got a question here from Jean Jean Luc Jean Luc you should be at work I don't know what's going on <laughs> Jean Luc Donner should be okay. at work I think the guy's a brand ambassador and... yes yeah okay and off road rider instructor okay so you know well he wants to know how many bikes are going to be going across to New Zealand in total? I think we might have already answered that yes, one. Yes, it's uh, up to 140 that we will put on the uh, boats Okay, in New Zealand. Question is, can you re respond in French? Oh, no. Sorry. I had Latin in school, so <laughs> no use for that. I think I can. Ça fait 140 Jean-Luc, je crois. Okay. All right. So we've got another question here from Patrick. Okay. Oh, Patrick is just saying we've got loads and loads of comments saying awesome. Oh, we're really glad you like it. I mean, it's just fantastic, isn't it? It really, really is a wonderful bike. So the team put a lot of work into it and wanted to make it a special edition for the yeah. trophy. And we're really proud that it turned out that way. And uh, uh, thanks to all the, the project team that worked so hard and our colleagues that made it possible that this bike was created for 2020. Yeah, no, we're already excited about it. Of course, there are a lot of people watching thinking, God, I'd love to get my hands on a bike like this is and whether there is going to be any sort of special edition, limited edition bike available after the trophy, what are the chances of that, Christian? I would say we just wait for the comments that we get and uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, we like the bike as well and uh, maybe we give it into a special edition. You'll see. Okay, you heard it from the man himself. If you like this bike, just let BMW Motorrad know about it, okay? So anyway, we're going to be uh, back soon with a lot more news from the GS Trophy. But from now, from Christian and myself, it's goodbye. Keep asking your questions and sending them. We'll, we'll answer them as many as we can from the back office, okay? Take care. Right. Over and out. Thank you.